In this video, we are talking about Xtool Creative Space. This is the laser software that works with all Xtool products. We are specifically covering how XCS works with the S1. Let's get into it. Hey there, I'm Sarah. You're watching Creative Ramblings, where I share simple projects and in-depth tutorials on machines that help you in your creative journey. We have talked a lot about Xtool lasers here, and today we're doing an in-depth look at the software that powers those lasers. So the first thing you need to do is download the software. You can do this at Xtool's website. The second thing you need to do is connect your machine to your computer. You can do this via USB or Wi-Fi, whatever's going to work best for you. This video is specific to the S1. There are some features within this laser and XCS that are unique and don't work with the other lasers. However, we're going to do a general overview of the software. So if you're using the M1 or the P2 or the D1, you can take something away from this video as well. Make sure you check out my Xtool playlist with all of my laser videos and other software tutorials to help you along your creative journey. This is Xtool Creative Space. The first thing we want to do is connect our machine. So up here in the right hand corner, I have my S1 connected via Wi-Fi. You can also connect this via USB. I tend to work on USB because my computer is very close, but you can do Wi-Fi and that gives you the ability to not be tethered. We've already placed a piece of basswood into the machine, and we're gonna go over those settings before we get into the software pieces. So right below this, there are a couple options, flat laser, cylindrical, screen print, a couple different options here. So you wanna choose the one that you're working with. We're choosing a flat laser right now. It's just the 40 watt laser head that's in there. This cylindrical works with the rotary tool, the conveyor, or the screen print. Under material, if you can find the material in this list that you are working with, I highly recommend starting there. So we are going to pick our basswood here. This is going to auto populate settings. You can always manually adjust this, but in this list, and you can click on more here, try to choose from something that's available. It's just going to give you settings to work with. Now we can see this little red cross in the middle. That is where the laser head is and it's over the top of my material. Make sure that your laser is over the top of your material and then we're going to measure the distance. This is going to auto measure for us. There's no need to manually focus. So we are now focused and now we want to start marking. This is unique to the S1. If you are using a laser with a camera like the M1, you are gonna actually see a picture of your material on the screen. But here with the S1, we're gonna mark. This walks you through everything, but let me, let me take you through it. My material is a square, so we're gonna do a rectangle. And now I'm gonna go over to the machine and I am going to place the laser head at the very top left corner and then hit the button on the front of the machine. Then I'm going to move it all the way down to the bottom right corner and hit the button on the front of the machine again. So this box that is on my screen is now my working area. So I know exactly where to place my design. So let's take a look at the rest of Xtool Creative Space. Up here on the far left is our settings tab. Uh, I have mine measured in inches. You can move it to millimeters. There's a ton of other options around here. I don't use this very often. Xtool is great about identifying any bugs that come up and always consistently updating their software. This next icon up here allows you to import images, open projects, and save. This cloud over here allows you to save a certain amount of projects to the cloud within Xtool. Over on the right here, you do have an option for support. You also have this Xtool projects tab. So let's take a look at that. There are a ton of projects you can use here. A lot of these are user created and uploaded. There are also some Xtool created projects here that you can use. They walk you through 
the instructions on what settings to use. So you have the option to create these projects and import one into the software. So we're going to go back to the editor now. And let's say that you want to import your own project. So the first thing we want to do is import a file. So we can do that up here and I'm going to import an image. I can also do that from this button right here that says image. All of these graphics here I picked up from Creative Fabrica. It's a great website that allows you to download designs and graphics and they have a commercial license that comes with them. So check, check out Creative Fabrica. There's a link down in the description. So we're just going to grab one of these. This is a PNG format. Xtool accepts lots of different formats. PNG is an image or a bitmap image. If I, if I size this up, it has a tendency to get a little blurry on the edges because it is an image. So anytime we have an image, the first thing you want to do, this, this is going to pop up here where it says bitmap image. The first thing we want to do is trace it. This counts for a picture that you actually take or a graphic like we have here. Then we're going to separate the two and this original PNG here, we're going to delete. And now I have this piece here. So when I size it up and down, we no longer see the blurriness and this is going to give me a really smooth cut or engrave. You can also import an SVG. So I'm going to do that with the same design. Now these actually look exactly the same. They are both accepted. I prefer to work with SVGs because I don't have to trace them and they're just easier to work with. It's one less step. But right now they are both exactly the same. So we're just going to delete one of them and we're going to work with this one here. So let's take a look at the top here. So I can drag the size of this or I can adjust the width and the height up here. I can also adjust the position manually. This is the position it is on the canvas. I can reflect this image, reflect it horizontally or vertically and turn it around. If I have multiple things, so let's say we insert a rectangle here and I want this rectangle to overlap with this piece, I can select everything come up here to combine and I can unite them together, giving me one big piece. This doesn't look that great. I don't know why you'd wanna do that here, but it does come in handy when you're doing more detailed projects down the road. So I'm just gonna undo that and we're gonna get rid of this rectangle. So this combine function up here can work really well when you're creating graphics within Design Space. We can also arrange, so if you have different layers, you can bring them to the front or send them to the back. Let's insert another shape here. Um, let's say that we want to, we're going to select these both again, we want to align them. This function is pretty great. Um, if you're lining up text or letters or graphics, you can bring them all together without having to do that manually. So that's a nice function. So we can get rid of this heart here. You do have the option to group and ungroup up here. Those options work really well if you have a number of different pieces that you want to all bring together. There is an option up on top called corner radius. This is a newer option and it works with this rectangle right here. You draw your rectangle, it has 90 degree corners. This option now allows you to round those corners to the exact specifications that you want. Over here on the left, you can insert all kinds of different things. So we have some basic line, rectangle, and circle functions here. So you can draw them and then you can adjust your sizing up here or your sizing manually. For a circle, this, is, this isn't quite a circle here, if I wanted to adjust it, I can unlock and make it more of an oval. So let's look at the array option. So you may have heard of a material test, which is where you engrave a whole bunch of circles or squares at different powers and speeds to figure out how they work on materials. Um, this is how you do it up here. You can also make a grid. 
So it just kind of duplicates and lays out your design for you. You can also outline. So I use this function quite often. You can outline large or small and then pull your two pieces apart. This might give you an option if let's say I wanted to cut this one, but then engrave the other pieces in the middle, that might be a nice option to use. So that kind of covers everything on the top. There is a smart fill option that is grayed out here. I do not use that very often, but I did use it with my M1 and the camera, and I'll go into that in more detail um, in the M1 software video. Uh, the only other option up here is a rotate button, which we have all circles, so that doesn't matter too much, but you can rotate your items um, up here. All right, so let's go down the left-hand side. Let's actually start at the bottom. This hand tool here um, moves your whole screen around and the select tool allows you to select your pieces. So we already talked about importing an image or an SVG. You can insert these couple things. Shape here is way more than shape. So let's look at that. You have basic shapes, borders, but then you have all of this clip art here. And if you click on the little arrow, it opens up a ton more. And so you have the freedom to use all of this in your designs, which is pretty cool. So use that if you need to. There's also a text option. So when you bring up text, hello is the default. And then over here on the right, you can change it to whatever you want. You can change the size. And there's a whole bunch of actual fonts in here that you can use. You can also use any of the system fonts that are installed on your computer. You can change it to bold or regular. If, you, if I had a couple lines, I could change the line spacing. Let me talk to you about this weld option really quick because this is very cool. If, let me change this to not caps. If I write the word welcome, you can see, and I have this script font, you can see how the E and the L and the C over here, they kind of overlap. What's going to happen is they're going to cut out, the laser is going to cut out each of those letters, and I actually want them to be together. So this cuts out as one word. So with it selected, I'm going to click weld, and now everything is going to cut out together. Once it's welded, you no longer have the text option. So make sure you're completely done before you use that weld option, but it's definitely something that's gonna come in handy. There is one more new feature in the text function, and that is this little green icon right here. When you have text pulled up, you can click on this and it will curve your text. So this is gonna work really well if we have a sign or something and you want those letters to flow perfectly around a curve that you're creating. So that is text vector allows you to create a shape of your own design using any number of points and bringing them together and then you can work with this as a shape. AI art here uh, allows you to create some neat designs using AI technology. Then we have the QR code here. You can create a QR code or a barcode. This is awesome if you are creating a sign for your business and you are at a market, you want somebody to be able to scan it and go to your website. You can engrave that on a piece of acrylic or wood and stand it up at your table. Love this option. Okay, so that covers everything on the top and the side here. So we are going to delete some of these pieces here and we are just going to work with the circle and this piece here. Now, let's talk about layers. For a job like this, I wouldn't necessarily need to use layers, but I wanna show you how they work. So this is gonna default as layer two. This one here, I'm going to move it to a different color. So let's say we're gonna move it to purple and it's gonna be called layer three. Layer one was one of those other objects that was on here that we deleted. The numbers don't actually matter. Okay, so now we have two layers. So now let's move over to the right here and let's do something with these layers. Everything on the right is what is gonna actually happen with your laser. So first and foremost, I wanna click off of my graphics. And this is the stuff we did earlier. We set our material, our distance, and our marking. Now I want to cut out this circle. 
So I'm going to select cut. The numbers under here are the recommended settings for the three millimeter basswood. I like these settings. They work really well for what I'm doing. If you run a material test grid or you've been using your laser for a while, you may find that you want to go to 90% power or 20 speed. You're going to learn what works best for you. And even though we all have the same laser, the settings may be a little bit different. If you change your settings, you can manually set it and save it. And then you can save it as a name so you know what works best for basswood. But for now, we're going to stick with this. This piece right here. I want to engrave this. When I hit engrave, it colors everything in. So I know that it's going to engrave all those pieces. If I just wanted the outline, I could go to score. That's going to be a lot thinner and it's just going to score it. But I want to engrave it. Now I want to highlight both of these, go up to the align function here, and I'm going to align it horizontally and then I'm going to align it vertically so they are centered perfectly. One thing you can do in layers here is let's say I only wanted to engrave on my first pass. On layer two here, I can click ignore. And then on layer three, it says output. So all this is going to do is engrave layer three. And then when I'm done with the process, I could come back and I could put output for this one and ignore for this one. That's how layers works. You may use it down the road for a more complicated project. All right, so my design is already set up within this basswood area here. And, oops. Now, I just accidentally pulled this a little bit, and I didn't mean to. One thing I like to do once everything is set, so I have engrave and cut set separately, highlight everything and click group. This is just means I can move this all over the place, and I'm not going to worry about it. But when it's grouped, you have a hard time changing your settings. So make sure your settings are set first. All right, so I want to put this up in the left corner, let's say of my basswood, and I want to make it a little bit smaller. The next thing we're going to do is framing. Framing is going to show me on the laser physically where the laser is going to cut. It is peace of mind and a double check to know that we're cutting in the right area. So I'm going to go do that now. I'm just going to push the button on the front of my machine. With framing complete, I'm ready to process. So down in the right hand corner here, I'm going to hit process. And down in the left hand corner, I have an estimated time. It shows me exactly what's happening. We're going to engrave the top and cut the back. And then I can go ahead and hit start. The final step in this is pushing the button on the machine. You do have the ability to work with another window while this is cutting and engraving. A minimize button will pop up and I'll be able to work on a different project while this is processing. When everything is done, I can just go back to Creative Space and you can save your project and all your settings will be saved. So we covered Xtool Creative Space and how it works with the S1 laser. I do want to mention two things. Xtool has some really involved and supportive Facebook community groups. So I've linked the one for the S1 down in the description. There's some amazing people in these groups. I would highly recommend checking it out if you own this laser. The other thing I want to mention is that Xtool support is pretty amazing. So if you are having an issue that the community can't answer or you're really struggling with, reach out to Xtool's support and they're gonna be able to assist you. If you liked this video, if you found this helpful, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I am here every week with brand new videos that help you along your creative journey. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.